continues on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer and also found in your service bulletin. Using the right one service during our Lenten season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen.
reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth, God said. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and all the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. reading from 1 Peter. Christ suffered for the sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, 
When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel. Of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. sympathy for the devil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. please be seated. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. For 18 centuries, the first Sunday in Lent has always been focused on the temptation of Christ. It has often been called Devil Sunday in the liturgical year. You know, I really don't like that title, Devil Sunday. I have no sympathy for giving the devil his due or to name a Sunday after him. So I really prefer to call it God Defeats the Devil Sunday. That's more appropriate. God defeats the devil Sunday. This morning, scripture says that immediately after Jesus was baptized, Jesus was sent to the wilderness where he would be tempted by Satan. The scripture reading says that the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Now, the phrase drove him may be translated as really pushed him out. And there's a very human feel to that image of the Holy Spirit pushing Jesus out. Have you ever had to give someone you loved a little push so that they might gain or accomplish something greater or gain a greater sense of confidence in the end? If you're a parent, you probably have done that at some point or the other, that little push that they need. Sometimes a spouse will give another spouse that little push that they need, sometimes a shove. <laughs> God knew that Jesus needed to be tried or tested in order for his ministry to be thoroughly clarified with confidence. Also, the temptation of Christ was to fulfill the scripture of a suffering servant who has intimate knowledge of the temptations and the trials and the suffering of humanity. The scripture tells us that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. Now, the ancient metaphorical interpretation of 40 days suggests that 40 days or 40 years in the wilderness is like saying, really, it was exactly as long as God intended to do his full and abundant work. So 
literally it may not have been 40 days. It was just an expression. Like, oh, I've been, <laughs> I've been down and out for 40 days. 40 days means it took as long as it took Jesus or God to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish in a people or in an individual. I actually kind of like that. If it's not to be necessarily taken literally, I might be up for shortening these 40 days of waiting during Lent, having to hold our hallelujahs for 40 days, which, by the way, don't forget, we don't say our hallelujahs until, until Easter. Since we know that the Spirit led Jesus to the wilderness, clearly God is at work here, but so is the devil. For 40 days, the struggle of temptation continues. The Greek translation of temptation actually means to test, to be examined, or to prove, to prove oneself. Our scripture reading says that immediately after Jesus was baptized, he was led to the wilderness where he was tempted. Now, according to some preachers that I've heard, everything is solved by becoming a Christian. That our troubles will cease if we only follow the Lord. Well, you know, my dear people, that is just not so. In fact, I'm not so sure that when we, be, when we become a Christian and truly follow Christ in his discipleship, that we may actually invite a whole lot of trouble in our life. And even from the devil himself. Then the devil gets real interested in us, doesn't he? Being a Christian does not spare us trial, temptation, or testing. Like Jesus, we will face Satan and all of his little nasty minions and beasts. Now note, Jesus is not taking a leisurely, pensive walk on a well-maintained trail in the wilderness. He's being tested, and he is being tempted mightily. God's purpose in times of testing may be to help us grow and to build our faith and confidence in him. But at the same time, Satan has his own purpose. He'll use that time also to turn us away from God, to weaken our faith, and to tempt us to sin. Satan lurks in the wilderness and the wastelands of our own lives. Now, our wilderness may be a jungle of fear, anxiety, illness, health struggles, financial struggles, relationship struggles, grief, loneliness, or despair. But Satan awaits for these situations. Satan awaits us in those unproductive wastelands of our lives where there is jealousy, there is deceit, there is gossip, apathy, lust, backbiting, a need to control, or what I see most often is a sense of entitlement being judgmental, or critical, or any other behavior or thoughts that do not bear good fruit. That's the fertile ground that the devil can operate in. Now, where are the demons in our lives? You know, Satan rarely comes to us directly. Oh, he's much too smart, much too deceptive and subtle for that. Satan probably will not come up to us in a devil suit, in a devil outfit, and introduce himself. Hi there. I'm Satan. <laughs> Satan 
will probably not introduce himself. Like in that great Rolling Stone song, Sympathy for the Devil. I can see Mick Jagger with his puffed out lips and hand on his hip as he sings these actually quite profound lyrics. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for a long, long year, stole many a man's soul and faith. And I was around when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain, made sure that Pilate washed his hands and sealed his faith. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Hope you guess my name. But what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. Just call me Lucifer, because I'm in need of some restraint. Satan certainly does need restraint. And I know just the person who can do that. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. No, oh, no, no self-respecting Satan or his demons would approach a person and offer ruin and destruction. Can I offer you ruin and destruction in your life? Now that would be in the small print in the bottom of the temptation. <laughs> the tempter in the garden, think about this, the tempter in the garden of Eden did not ask, do you wish to be like a devil? No. The serpent asked, do you wish to be like God? Do, would you like to have the same knowledge as God? Or even be on more equal footing. So that was a temptation. The demons in our lives may be released even from a friend. Or for those that we might know. Like when Jesus turned around and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Now, of course, Peter was not Satan incarnate. But what he was trying to introduce to Jesus, a shortcut through the cross. That was not of the Lord. The demons are at work when we find too much security in our investments. Too much security in our material possessions. Rather than putting our trust in God. The other side of uh, sort of the trial and tribulations is the demons may be found in our successes, in our achievements, through our pride, through our peer groups, or maybe even our social standing. You know, frankly, I do a pretty good job uh, standing faithful and standing firm in trials and tribulations. But where I have to watch is when I'm at the top of the heap, feeling like I'm at my best or there's great achievement. In the past when I had five publications, oh yeah. I have a greater chance of losing my humility when I'm strutting around, if you know what I mean. Now, I'm watchful for that now, too. Demons are found anytime we are tempted to replace even good things like success or relationships, even family or friends, over faith and obedience to God. Folks, the monsters are not hiding under our beds. They are camouflaged right in front of us in our daily lives. The good news, thank God there's good news. The good news is that these are all desert battles, but God has won the war. 
God, through Jesus Christ, has defeated Satan in the wilderness and in the desert. The good news is that we are not alone in our wilderness journey. As the angels were sent to serve and to wait on Jesus, as the scripture says, so does God send his angels to keep charge over us, to help us through our time of trial, and to wait with us like a parent holding a child's hand until it's over. Jesus has spent his own time in the wilderness. You know, he understands what we face. Jesus goes with us into the wilderness of our own lives. He has met the enemy and he has won. If we allow Jesus to go with us, we too can be victorious through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's part of the good news. We're not alone. We've just entered our 40 days of Lent. This is a time when we can reflect on our own wilderness experience of our own lives and to identify where the hidden demons and nasty critters may be lurking in our own lives, in our behavior, in our thoughts, and most actively in our attitudes. We must remember, though, it's not just a time of penitence. It's not just a time of looking under the covers to see what we don't want to see. You know what I mean? I hate doing that. I don't want to see myself as I am. I don't want to look under every little crevice and go, oh, do I have to look at that? That's a part of the Lenten season. But we have to remember this is also a time for the possibilities of growth, renewed faith, and clarity of our ministry with a sure and present confidence that can bring us a sense of fullness and wholeness into our lives. So it's not just self reflection. It's looking forward also to being made whole. So all those fragmented parts that we find, doggone it, can be made whole also during the Lenten season. And most assuredly and symbolically at Easter. We are made full and whole again. According to our gospel reading, Jesus came out of the wilderness and then he entered into the world to serve God faithfully until the journey's end. And then Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So may we emerge from our wilderness experience and then walk into the world believing and proclaiming the good news and rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.
us now stand and say together the Nicene Creed, the outline of our Christian faith. Found on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was a saved man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Our confession can be found on page 331 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your bulletin. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by law and word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance, and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone.
beauty of the snow. We pray for safe traveling. Aren't you a brave crowd? <laughs> Thank you for being here, for representing the rest of the congregation who are not able to come. Uh, you did good. I hope you stay safe. A special thank you to my uh, son, Andrew. As we say in the South, bless his heart. Uh, when I got to church, he had sent one of his crews here early this morning uh, to try to clear out the best possible uh, our, our uh, snow and ice, especially for the 1030. Uh, not sure if it helped out for the 8. Uh, although people didn't have any problems. It was just a little bit risky, I think, walking too. But... Uh, Special thanks to Andrew uh, for his gift to us. Um, he sent a whole crew here. And he is busy, as you can imagine, as all get out. I mean, he is booked and has been booked all week. A couple of announcements. Don't forget our healing service. We should be all cleared out by then, uh, starting at 1210. Such a sweet service. And also our new, uh, our daily breads are, are available, the new edition, uh, and you can find those in the back of the church in the narthex and also in the foyer. Our study, uh, Les Miserables, we, uh, our Lenten study, we, uh, we decided, well actually I guess I decided, that we would postpone uh, that first session today because of the weather, uh, it, it was too important of a study, and we also have a DVD. I was just afraid we'd just maybe have a couple of people, and we can catch up for next Sunday. So next Sunday, we will begin that uh, very interesting series based on Victor Hugo's uh, classic tale. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to such Lenten themes of mercy and grace and poverty and justice. Uh, it should be very appropriate for the season. In fact, it was written for the Lenten season in the mind. Come, come join us at about, oh, 9.15, 9.20 on Sunday mornings uh, through, throughout Lent. We did not have our regular prayers of the people because of the great litany. Uh, I'm hope that most of you know by now that uh, Henry Boyd uh, has also passed away. Uh, um, as you might guess, with all the weather, it has interfered with the funeral planning. Uh, in fact, the crematorium was closed last week. The, uh, they had a hard time getting funeral appointments. Uh, so uh, I will give you an update on those funeral plans, but it will probably be two weeks from now. Uh, next week will just be what should have happened this week. Uh, and, and so talking to the boys, Vicki and Henry, they think it'll be in a couple of weeks. But we'll let you know. Please keep that family in your prayers. Losing a mom and a dad. Two loved ones within a short period of time. Not surprising, but still. Are there any, any other announcements that we might need to? Do we have any birthday celebrations today? Birthday celebrations? How about anniversary celebrations? Well, I have an anniversary of sorts, and that is the anniversary of our ordination, which was on February 15th. And so the uh, greenery has been given in honor of my ordination which has absolutely been a blessing uh, to my life and I hope a blessing to others. I, I can tell you that I've, I've never looked back or second-guessed. Uh, not that I haven't had some rough days, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I never question. And when I think about doing anything else, So that's how I know that I'm where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> oh gosh, 
Uh, 2000, my math is terrible. Uh, <laughs> 2006? Yeah. And I've been here. Can you believe it? I've been here 12? Yeah. Hey, we got to change this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been a blessing being here, too, by the way. Well, y'all are a blessing to me. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give and to give of yourselves, especially during this Lenten season, than to receive. It has been a while. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Once offered, 
a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Thine is the 
Easter. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us a sight of peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs> not be here today and for all of those that we have prayed for the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep them into everlasting life amen
assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week, during our now great Lenten season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen.